Hello everybody and welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to swap out the shim uh, to just for drop and cast on the Franchi Affinity Elite. Also pertains to Franchi Benelli's same gun. Um, really, uh, you can watch my last video when I pattern tested the Franchi Affinity Elite. You can see right here, most of the shot is low. So kind of knew that when I uh, looked down the barrel of this gun, I do see quite a bit of the rail. So I had to adjust my uh, drop a little bit on this so that's what I'm going to be doing today um, this is not a aftermarket modification I have to say this for YouTube because they demonetize a lot of my videos because they think this is an aftermarket modification when really this is just assembling the gun you could do this the very first time assembling the gun which doesn't really matter they'll probably demonetize this video as well but first things first you got to remove the uh, butt stock off the gun again so I'll just Remove this off of here real quick, and then we we'll have to pull out the uh, stabilizer that I also put in the bottom of the stock. That will need to come out again as well. And there's the second one out, so there's the stock. I'm gonna go ahead, tip the gun up, and remove the uh, stabilizer out of here. Again, we are using 13 millimeter socket. by hand now. Alright, so there's that stabilizer piece out of the bottom. Now let me go grab the flashlight again and show you what we have left down in here to take out. So now down in here we have a uh, another nut to take out of there. Not sure if it's still 13 millimeter, but we'll find out. Uh, that's got to come off to actually get the stock off. I'm going to adjust this to a little bit longer of an extension to get down in there as well. Okay, this nut down in here is a uh, 15 millimeter now. So I got the deep socket on here. Let's go ahead and see how hard this is to take off. be able to do it by hand now. Alright, that should be off there now. Now, you can kind of see it separating right here, but the butt stock will separate now. that dump out our parts down in here so we have a uh, regular washer a nut and a locking washer pretty simple so those go in that order And as you can see, that is the only thing down in there. The uh, Benelli sometimes also have a second shim down in here to adjust for drop and cast. Apparently the Franchi does not. You can see here is our shim here. So on here they have RB shim already on here. The R stands for right. If you take the shim off and flip it over, you'll actually see L. That stands for left if you're a left-handed shooter. Here are the uh, four other shims that they give you come with the gun. So I got a little cheat sheet here. So R is always for right and then there's RZ which is 50 millimeter drop, RA 55 millimeter, RB which is in the gun that's 60 millimeter drop, RC 65 millimeter and RD which is 70 millimeter drop. So right now with RB being in the gun and that's a 60 millimeter drop I'm still kind of seeing the rib of the gun and the gun is of course shooting low for that reason 
So I'm gonna switch it out to RC to increase my drop to about 65 millimeter and see if I still see that rib there. And then I'll go ahead and pattern test it and see if that uh, brings my patterning back a little bit better. So I am looking for the C shim. RC on one side, LC on the other. All it does is move the uh, stock left or right. So let me see if I can kind of show you from the smallest shim, the thickness of it. So this is pretty thin here up on the top versus something like the thickest, like an RD. You can see how thick this shim is up on the top compared to the Z. Actually overlay them, they're about twice the thickness. So now I'm gonna go ahead and pull off the RB shim that's on here. And if you're a right-handed shooter, you want the R side facing you. So right now this says RB facing me. So now I'm going to face the RC towards me. And that just sits right on there. Now the stock will go back over in here, seat like that. And now I'm going to go get some long tweezers to help me drop these washers right onto the bolt that's down in there. All right, I got the uh, long tweezers here. So the order these should go in is the flat washer, then the locking washer, and then your nut last. So I'm gonna go ahead, grab the flashlight so that I can see down in here, and then start picking up the washer. Drop that on. Now the locking washer goes next. And then lastly, a nut. This is probably going to be the hardest one to get on there. If I can get it somewhat straight though, I'll be able to just thread it on with the uh, wrench here. The nice thing is that up near the top of this bolt it is actually a little bit smaller diameter to thread that uh, balance weight on. So it does slip on there pretty easy. Now I should be able to slip the wrench over it. Start threading on here. You wanna make sure that you don't cross thread it. All right, got it hand tight in there. Everything looks good here, no gaps. I'm gonna go ahead Make sure the stock is nice and lined up on each side here. Then go ahead, tighten that bolt down the rest of the way. You don't wanna to go too tight. Once again, this is just a plastic shim in here. That locking washer just needs to compress and hold it into place there. That was plenty tight. Now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, drop the balancer back on here. So this weight will just drop down in here. It lines itself pretty easily. And now I'm gonna swap out back to the uh, 13 millimeter again. Now the last thing left to do is just put the uh, butt stock back on here. So this sometimes doesn't want to go in very easily. Last time I set it on the ground, put it in, but I'm going to start putting in some of these screws first. At least get them beneath the rubber before I uh, shove this on with some force. Okay, they're partially way in. You can see there's a gap here. So now usually just shoving it down, you can kind of hear that seat in there. And that did go in there now. The screws will suck it in the rest of the way. There we 
there goes. Sucked in the top. We put the bottom in the rest of the way. Everything feels tight. So everything is back assembled now. Now is the true test. When I bring this up and shoulder it, am I going to still see the uh, rail here? Or am I just gonna be able to look down, look straight at the sights? This actually looks perfect. I don't see any of the rail anymore. Shouldering this, it's going straight down the sights. So now the next true test, I'm gonna take this out do another pattern test on it and see where my pattern ends up. If anything, I want high, about 60% high for European guns, 40% low. This is definitely way too low. So go ahead and we'll see how this patterns now. Thanks for watching and make sure you hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video. Also make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next videos I will be posting and leave your questions, comments, and suggestions below.